Yuri Vitrenko is the CEO of Naftogaz, Ukraine's largest national oil and gas company, and served as the Ukrainian energy minister. He joins us now live from Ukraine. So really good to have you on the show. Um, before we get into the details of the infrastructure issue that we're facing right now in Ukraine, how are you doing? How's your family doing? And importantly, your team that is still very much uh, working to ensure that gas supplies don't stop to the most uh, needy people across the country. Uh, of course, it's not easy for Ukrainians to live through these horrors of the war. Um, our employees, uh, uh, they have to work because we have to keep Ukrainians uh, warm. Uh, I'm now in Kyiv, that's our capital. Uh, air rates are constant, uh, but we have to live uh, under these uh, conditions. And not just to live, but also to so work to again to ensure that people are uh, warm. So we, we know we've heard so many of these stories where people are left in the cold that they haven't been able to uh, get any heating. Could you talk to me about the gas pipelines and the critical infrastructure that supports civilians and whether you think that Russia has been deliberately targeting those gas pipelines? Because there are other gas pipelines that feed into Europe. Could you give me a sense of what's going on there? Yes, Ukraine is rather a developed country in terms of centralization of its infrastructure. Uh, about 90% of Ukrainian homes use gas as a major source of um, energy. Um, and uh, because uh, Putin's blitzkrieg failed, he started targeting deliberately civilian infrastructure to create humani uh, humanitarian catastrophes and to put uh, additional pressure on Ukraine to give up. Uh, such cities as Mariupol, Severodonetsk, uh, uh, Kharkiv, other big cities. Uh, again, people are there without electricity, uh, heating for more than a week. And even today, for example, we had to shut down uh, the last heating plant in Severodonetsk because of the heavy bombing and, and shelling. So people will be left without uh, heating. And that's a deliberate uh, attack by Russians. Well well, what is the what percentage of the critical civilian infrastructure that supplies gas has been destroyed? Would you say? Uh, currently, I would say it's about uh, ten percent. Um, so major parts uh, of Ukraine uh, was, were still able to provide uh, gas over there, electricity and other utilities. Uh, we, we are trying to do our best and still to deliver again uh, critical supplies in uh, areas where it's possible. I want to talk about the gas pipelines that run through Ukraine that go into Europe and whether there's been any interruption in the supply chain from Russia into European countries. And what's your assessment? Do you think we'll see an interruption? Uh, currently, there is no interruption and there is no damage. So it's also obvious that uh, Russians are trying not to damage this high pressure pipeline that transit gas from Russia to Europe. So they're targeting low pressure pipelines, so-called distribution pipelines, but not the high pressure pipeline. Um, let's see how it develops, because they are harassing our employees uh, uh, in the occupied territories. They try to interfere in our systems. We tell them that uh, it's not acceptable and it endangers uh, transit. So, but it's still kind of an ongoing uh, problem uh, in those stations that are in the occupied territories. So, you, you know, you're the former energy minister. You are now, you know, heading up this important utility in Ukraine. How does it make you feel that the invader is sending gas to your allies through your country right now? Do you feel that there should be sanctions against this? Yes, uh, we are very consistent in terms of uh, demanding a full embargo on Russia gas and oil because uh, Putin uses this money on his war machine to kill um, Ukrainians uh, and to wage this aggressive wars uh, uh, all over the world. So that's why it should be stopped. Um, if some European company, uh, countries at the moment uh, still uh, depend on Russian gas and oil to an extent that they cannot uh, stop uh, purchasing it, then at least uh, so-called uh, escrow accounts should be used that Putin cannot get money uh, for the exports of oil and gas. And uh, this money is frozen until he militarily withdraws from uh, Ukraine. That's something that uh, uh, we could see in, in, um, in case of Iranian sanctions. So that's something that should be done immediately yeah. so that Putin stops getting this money.
Yuri Vitrenko, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Really good to have you on the show and we wish you all the best.